Let's try to apply what we learned in the question. The left end of a long glass rod. So I believe this will be a long glass rod with an end that is rounded like this. Okay. So the left end of the long glass rod is 6 cm in, in diameter. So this is the diameter. Let me write it down. Okay, so this is your diameter and it's 6 cm. 0 0.60. Sorry, 0 0.060 meter okay then it's a convex hemispheral surface 0 0.060 meter then it's a convex spherical have hemispheral surface so this is convex okay so light comes in then it strikes on a convex surface and then this hemispheral surface is 3 cm in radius so it means the distance here it's 3 cm, 0 0.030 meter. Okay, the refractive index of the glass is uh, 1.60. So we can say that the index of refraction, refraction and glass will be equals to 1.60. And they say that to determine the position of the image if an object is placed in the air on the axis of the rod at the following distance to the left of the vertex. Okay, so the distance is to the left of the vertex and they have different distances to represent the position of the object. So it's to the left, so we label it over here. So your A will be at infinity. So probably around here, uh, when, when your U is equals to infinity, that's A. Then the second second one asks for 12 cm. 12 cm is about somewhere here. Okay, just roughly, yeah. Okay, I don't know it for sure. So this is B. Then when it's 2 cm, it will be slightly around here. Then this will be C. Okay, so we know this is uh U1, this is U2, this is U3. Then we are asked to find where is V1, V2, and V3. I shouldn't label you, I should label O actually, because O represents object, right? The distance is what we label as U. We should label it as O. Okay, so I have object 1, object 2, object 3. Then I need to find where is I1, I2, and I3. So uh, we'll apply straight away the formula that you will learn, the formula for spherical surfaces. So let's try and do it for A. For A, when the object distance is infinitely far, we again just plug in the formula actually, and 1 over U plus N2 over V equals to N2 minus N1 divided by R. So we know that light will go from the left hand side of the rod, uh, which is air, then it strikes on the spherical surface, then enter the glass medium. So the medium one that we have here, it's air. And when it comes to air, we know that uh, it's just similar to vacuum, the index of refraction, you can think of it as 1.00. Okay, so with that said, we can substitute in the index of refraction first. The first medium is 1.00, then divide by something. The second medium is 1.60, divide by something is equals to 1.60 minus 1.00. So that's for all the index of refraction. Now we determine the U, V, and R. The U is given, the V is what we want to find, and the R is, uh, is given as well. But it cannot just substitute it straight away. We need to determine the sign of the U and R. So again, we check. Our object is on the left of this, uh, is in front of the spherical surface. In front of the spherical surface, this is our object. Then we know that the incoming ray, the incident ray, is also in front of the spherical surface. So both of them are in front of a spherical surface, so we call them to be on the same side. So on the same side, we use positive value. Okay, so positive value for you, then we know that you put in positive infinity, then we want to find V. For R, let's check again. Our center of curvature is uh, behind the spherical surface, 
and the refracted rays is also behind the spherical surface. Refracted enters and goes in here, right? So they are both on the same side. The center of curvature and the refracted ray both on the same side. If same, then positive. So it means by your uh, what should you put here? It's a positive, uh, positive value for R. Our R is three cm, so positive zero point zero three zero. Okay. So if we substitute in everything and we find the V will be equals to zero point zero eight meter. Okay, it's positive value here, then that's equivalent to eight cm. So what, we, what can we know is that our image should be formed, let's say around here, probably. Yeah, around here, that is where you find your I1. So you can think of if ray is coming from infinitely far away, you, it will get converged onto this point here, which is 8cm away from the spherical surface. Sort of like a focal point, sort of, huh? okay? So they will all converge onto this point if they come from infinitely far away. Okay. So it's like the ray comes from here, strikes here, then you will converge onto this point. Okay. So let's continue with B. B is 12 cm away. This is B. Let's try to do it. For B, again, the same formula. So I will not copy the formula again because I don't have much space. I will retain the index of refraction. Those parts should be the same. Now I will substitute for my U. Again, I've mentioned that everything in front, the incident rate is in front of the spherical surface. The object is also in front of the spherical surface. For A, B, C, they are the same case. So the U here should be positive. The U right now is 12 cm, so 0 0.120 meter. V just write down. Again, the same radius of curvature. We are not changing the spherical surface. So if you find V, you'll find that V will be equal to 0 0.137 meter, which is equivalent to 13.7 cm. So uh, in the case, you know that your image will probably be around here. Image probably somewhere around here. You get your I2. So if your object is if your object is here, then rays will be coming out from this object, then you strike the meat, strike the spherical surface, then it will bend towards this position I2 over here. Okay, so that's a situation for B. Let's continue for C if it's 2 cm, which is this O3 over here. So for this situation, again the same idea, 1.00 plus 1.60 goes to 1.60 minus 1.00. So now it's fill in the blank. We know that the radius is always this value. We are not changing the surface. Now for the object, it will be 2 cm, 0 0.0200. Okay, then find V. Then you find that V will be equals to negative. Right now the value will be negative 0 0.0533 meter and if you change it to cm there will be negative 5.33 cm so now the value is negative what does it mean when we see that the image uh, distance is negative it means that the image is on the opposite side to the refracted ray okay the refracted ray is coming into the glass rod like this so this is the area where we have refracted ray Negative tells us that the image is opposite side to the refracted ray. So it'll be here, outside the glass rod. Your image will be formed over here. So you know that this 5.33 cm is 5.33 cm from the vertex to the left. Instead of to the right, it's now to the left. So it's 5.33 cm to the left of the vertex. So that will be around here, I think. So this is your I3. Okay, so this is your I3. Then, yeah, I3 will be a virtual image, I think. Yeah, because I your refracted ray is in this region. So anything that comes out as image here will be constructed based on the dotted lines instead of solid refracted rays. So since it's dotted lines, then we know that it's a virtual image.
Okay, so that's for A, B, and C. And what kind of conclusion can we make is if we vary the object distance, you see that the image will be formed at various distances. But when you enter a point which is quite near to the spherical surface, you start to see that your image will start to form virtually in front of the spherical surface. Previously, the image is in the glass rod, but as you get close enough, your image will now be formed outside the glass rod. Okay, something quite interesting. So let's move on to the next question. The glass rod, this exact glass rod is now immersed in oil. So if we get to immerse this thing in oil, then I believe you need to change some of the parameters. It's no longer air, so it's no 1.00 anymore. So we'll call it N of oil, and that will be 1.45. Then now you place an object to the left of the rod on the rod's axis, and the image is from 1.20 meter. 1.20 meter is out of my range to be drawn here. So my object, eh, my image will be somewhere there. Okay, somewhere my image will be here. Let's call it image prime. New image will be formed here. So I want to find where is the object right now. Okay, the idea is still similar, just that we change the index of refraction. Not much problem. So 34.21. Again, the same formula, but let me write everything in terms of prime just to make it easier. N1 prime, the new index of refraction, uh, U prime plus N2 prime, V prime equals to N2 prime minus N1 prime divided by R prime. Okay, uh, it's just substitution right now, 1.45 to represent the initial medium. Then the final medium is still the glass, 1.60. Then it equals to 1.60 minus 1.45. We have settled all that. We are asked to find the object distance. So object distance is u prime, so we keep it as u prime. But v prime, v prime is an image formed inside the rod. Inside the rod means by refracted ray is coming inside the rod. Your image is also formed inside the rod, so they are both on the same side of the spherical surface. So your v here should be a positive v. Okay, so you can sub in positive 1.20 meter. Then your radius is again a positive value as usual. You are not changing the, the convex surface to a concave surface. You are not changing a surface. Just 0 0.030. So if you calculate everything, your new object distance will be at 0 0.395 meter. Okay, or you can call it 39.5 cm. Okay, so if you place your glass rod, if you immerse it into oil, then you'll find that the image form now will be at a different distance compared to when it's at air. Okay, so changing the outside medium, changing the spherical surface medium, changing the medium will cause a change to the object, this, uh, cause a change to the image distance. Okay, so that's all for this question.